Hi YouTube, this is Joe Calton with Calton Cutlery. You can visit me on the web, CaltonCutlery.com. Okay, so before I uh, get to work this morning, um, you know, making some paring knives and uh, some hunters for the season, <clears throat> I thought I'd go ahead and shoot a video and share with you my new portable ke slingshot catch box. Um, you guys know that I've got the big catch boxes, you know, uh, there's two of them at the corner of the shop over here, uh, and then there's one outside. And they're all made out of uh, steel drums. You know, there's the big ones are 55 gallon barrels, and the little one is like a 25 gallon barrel, something like that. They've got hangers with t-shirts in the back, and then they've got, you know, spinners tied across the front with hooks that you can hold uh, <coughs> uh, soda can hangers, you know, to be able to, to beat up a soda can if you want to. Those are great. I absolutely love them. I shoot at all three of them every single day, or as many days as I can. Um, but they're not very portable, okay? Um, so there are times that you want to shoot your slingshot and be able to recover your ammo away from your, uh, your normal catch boxes. You know, let's say you want to go up to the lake uh, for a day of fishing and you want something to do well, if the fish aren't biting, you want to go camping. Um, you know, you want to practice different shots. You know, you want to take your catch box and put it up on top of a shed so that you can, you know, practice shooting at a, a very steep incline. Or you want to take your catch box and you want to put it at the bottom of a flight of stairs and you want to be able to practice shooting down. Or you want to go to a friend's house and shoot and he doesn't have, you know, a really nice catch box or he's just getting started. whole bunch of reasons you might want a portable slingshot catch box. <clears throat> so I've looked at a couple of these, um, the, the standard ones, and I, I never really saw one that I liked all that much. The other day, my friend uh, Chuck and Steel here on YouTube he did uh, a review of his catch box and I watched the video and within 10 minutes I had ordered up uh, the stuff to make one pretty close to what his is. I was that excited about it. So anyway, so here it is. Um, I'll go ahead and take it down and then we'll put it back together and then I'll shoot it a couple of times. You can see how it works and you can build your own. <clears throat> this is uh, my everyday carry slingshot that I've been shooting today uh, or for the last uh, couple of months maybe a year or something like that. I've got uh, 0.66 green GZK with a 9.5 uh, pit locating pouch. It's cut 150 mil um, a start length, um, 28 at the frame and 17, at, 17 or 18 at the pouch. Um, and on a 50 degree day, the last time I chronographed it, it was shooting 255 feet per second, something like that. So it's a pretty powerful slingshot, puts out quite a bit of juice. And um, you, need, you need a good catch box to, to keep that. So anyway, <coughs> what we have here is a Weaver. Uh, we have got a Weaver Arborist uh, throw line cube in black and orange. Okay, it's made out of real nice, uh, pretty heavy uh, nylon fabric. This is what they use when you're using a throw line. You need to put a rope up in a tree. Um, a throw line is a, a very uh, hard, slick nylon rope, um, a little bit smaller in diameter than like 550 paracord. And a throw bag is, you know, basically a bean shot bag that's got, uh, you know, a piece of rope tied on the end of it. And you chuck that throw bag up in the tree it goes up and then goes over a limb hopefully and then when it falls down then you can grab a hold of it well this and tie in a, a larger rope and then pull it back over and that's how you install a climbing rope in a tree so what this does is it, it holds that throw line um, you know nice and neat so it doesn't get tangled um, and yet it can come out of the the box or the cube really fast so <clears throat> what we've got here is we've got a piece of cardboard that kind of helps um, you know, the shot from bouncing out so much. A couple of uh, uh, paper clips to hold that to the corners here. We've got uh, a couple of pony clamps on the top, or spring clamps. We have got one of my old t-shirts, and we've got a, uh, a clothes hanger with the clamp style uh, clip on there. You know, you could probably use the, the clamper types. You know, I don't think it really matters all that much. And then the hook has been cut off. We've got the last shooting session worth of ammo we need to put in my pocket. <clears throat> the uh, string that holds the, uh, the flipper here is just tied on to the, um, the handles on the sides of the throw bag. 
Okay, now this throw bag, you can see it says open and close and it twists directions, right? That's one of the cool things about this. Okay, so you put your, your feet on the corners here and whichever direction you want it to go, so we want to close it, so we'll rotate this top portion this way. And bam, it's folded up. Now you can go fold it in uh, quarters. This loop goes through like that, okay? You can put all your stuff inside here so you've just got, you know, one, um, one little doohickey. So you undo that, put it down on the ground. We go the other way and it pops back open. You can leave your flipper attached the whole time. <clears throat> okay, so now that we've got the, you know, the cube put back together again, we take our t-shirt with our hanger. Now the hanger has got like a little I-beam uh, type of construction right here. So what you're doing is you're taking the clamp and you're trying to hook it over the end of that so that it captures the fabric around that I-beam. Okay, it's a really nice uh, secure hole. So you want to put it um, not all the way at the back because then the t-shirt the can't move and absorb the energy from the shot. And not all the way at the front. You want to go about halfway-ish. You know, halfway, two-thirds, something like that. You clamp on there. You clamp on there. Leave the bottom of the t-shirt to where it's just kind of brushing um, the bottom of the catch box. Okay, that way when you hit it, it can move and absorb the energy of your shot. Take your piece of cardboard <coughs> and use your paper clips to clip it on to the um, little orange pieces there. And away you go. So now we'll back it up. Take our slingshot. Oh, that's too close. I mean, that's still going to be mighty dang close, but I'm not too sure how far how far y'all can see it. Should be able to see both of us there. Now, when you're shooting real close like this, okay, don't use the tip of your fork. Use like the middle portion, or um, you know, take yourself a pen and put like little hash marks. I don't know if you can see my little hash marks right there. And you're going to want to shoot or aim about halfway down the fork tip to be able to hit it this close. See, that was, uh, it's still shot under. See, it took those two shots real easy. We'll do two more. Now, watch that t-shirt if you get to see it with uh, the big screen. Or... If we put it at a little bit of an angle, that's mighty close, but I should be able to uh, get it up in there. Move the microscope out of the way. All right, now watch what that t-shirt does. See how that t-shirt kind of sucks, or, you know, the, the shot hits the t-shirt, it folds in and catches it? That's how come you can have a t-shirt hold a, a piece of steel ammo. Now, this, this particular setup with 9.5 mil steel uh, at 10 meters, it will put that ball completely through both sides of a, uh, um, like a soup can filled with water, okay? Um, blast clean through both uh, the front side of the can, the water, and the back side of the can completely penetrated at 10 meters. But yet that t-shirt is able to hold that shot because it can move when it gets hit, okay? So, <clears throat> this is a handy dandy catch box, like I said. And, um, you know, the fact that it folds down, uh, the cost. Um, I'm gonna put a link to uh, Chuck and Steele's video where he um, went over this down in the description. And he's got an uh, uh, Amazon affiliate link on where to purchase this off of Amazon. And I wanna say it was less than, it was either less than 40 or it was less than 50 delivered to my house. Um, and the rest of the stuff, I mean, besides the spring clamps, you know, I think those are like a buck a piece done at Home Depot. The, um, the old t-shirt and the old coat hanger, you know, we can't really put a price on those. Um, or the, the cardboard and the, 
<coughs> you know, the rest of the little parts and pieces. Um, and it's, it's big. That was one of the things that I was after um, when I was going to, you know, finally purchase one of these. Uh, you know, I was just going to purchase a ready-made one, but this one's quite a bit nicer. Is that the thing is huge, okay? It's, it's like a 15-inch. Okay, so it's 15. It's 16 on the outside edges of the, um, of the frame. You lose a little bit, you know, for the fabric, but still the opening... Even with this tied across, so it's kind of squeezing it in a little bit, the opening here is 14 inches by 14 and a half inches, okay? Now, when I'm shooting short draw, you know, that's way, way more size than what I need. But when I'm practicing long draw, we're talking, you know, like, like either long draw or, you know, full uh, butterfly, man, the bigger the target I can get, the better, because sometimes I can get really wild shooting like that. I mean, we're talking... I might not be able to keep it in that whole box at 10 meters. So a larger one is better. <clears throat> but anyway, so, um, so yeah, while you're, uh, uh, while you're looking at Chuck and Steele's video on this catch box here, check out some of his other ones. That dude is, is just pretty freaking amazing what he does with a slingshot. I mean, you know, I consider myself to be fairly good with a slingshot. I can make a slingshot do what the slingshot needs to do. So whether that's, you know, keeping the sparrows out of the garden or that's, um, you know, killing, um, you know, mice and, and 13 stripers around the garden um, or, you know, shooting a, a cottontail rabbit for lunch during season, um, you know, or, or knocking a tin can around. I mean, I can typically make a slingshot do with what I need need the slingshot to do. This guy, he's like a freaking artist, right? I mean, he's got a video where he shoots a soda can at like 200 yards with a slingshot and hits it like on the second or the third shot. I can't even see a uh, soda can at 250 yards, much less hit the thing with a slingshot. But man, he steps up there and makes that shot and makes it look cool like he's done it a whole bunch of times. But anyway, so yeah, he's got some really amazing videos, so check some of those out. <clears throat> anyway, um, yeah, I'm pretty excited to put this thing to work um, and get to practicing more. So again, this is Joe Calton with Calton Cutlery. You can visit me on the web, caltoncutlery.com. Hope you enjoyed the video, and we will see you next time.